Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Daniel and Mark show. So we're here on Sunday and we are going to run through some, some hot takes on NFTs and, you know, just kind of shoot the shit a little bit and, you know, do our thing. How you doing, Daniel? Good brother. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. So what's, uh, what's been happening, mate? <laughs> Marky, the first thing I need to draw attention to is the porn stash you've got going on. <laughs> like... You mean, you mean... You mean the Sanchez Jr.? Sanchez Jr.? <laughs> Honestly, when I first saw you with that, I was A, kind of excited, you know, and B, I'd honestly thought you'd taken a new career directing porn. Hey, <laughs> hey you should say it in person. It's even better. Like, she's got a little kill to her. <laughs> it's, not, it's just like at the... It's, a, it's, a, it's just in the early stages of the curling. I'm going to have to bring out, like, the little, the, the little brush soon. Dude, if you get this shit going, that will be so yeah. good. <laughs> Fucking hell. I love that shit. Hey, uh, they, they, they said... Um, they said to raise awareness, so I just ran with it. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying too, man. I just... Yeah, I, yeah. I can tell uh, those whiskers are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is bullshit. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. Uh, yeah. It's all jokes, I'm, bro. I'm, ra I'm raising awareness, just not sure what for. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you actually do it for November or like? Nah, nah, no? nah. I, I probably should at this stage now because like it's kind of got a bit of attention. But um, <laughs> originally I kind of just, I was growing everything and it was getting a bit long for like the fade, so... I mm. shaved this, but then I had like a meeting and I was like, fuck, I'm probably not going to be able to finish it. I was just going to kind of do the outside. And I'm like, you know what would be funny? If maybe I just leave the moustache. <laughs> but... You're 100% right. That would be funny. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give it, we'll give it a, give it a couple more days. We'll see, see if, see if, uh, see if we can hang in there. But anyway, man, more importantly, NFTs, NFTs, tell me what, what, um, What's your understanding of NFTs? Let's let's give a brief rundown because I'm sure, like, if you're if you're a millennial or a Zoomer, you've you've heard this word floating around NFTs, digital art, but you might not know exactly what it is. Good non fungible tokens, right? Non non fungible fun fungi. Non <laughs> non fungible. <laughs> fungi. So I can always paraphrase things in a better way. You probably understand technology better than I do, but. Um, the way NFTs work is essentially uh, they use blockchain technology that will allow the owner of or the original creator uh, of, you know, the specific art or there's many categories in the NFT space, can be music, can be mm. um, a host of different things to uh, le legally and officially still uh, have their name attached to it, even when it changed hands many, many times. Mm. Okay. So um, on the blockchain, it continuously has, you know, the creator and the very first uh, owner, sometimes called minting mm. uh, of that NFT at the very start of the blockchain. And uh, in this has kind of been attributed to a really good thing for a lot of um, industries like music industry. Because apparently there's a lot of um, problems with, you know, the original creators getting paid royalties and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. if, you know, a creator releases a song and then they kind of have, you know, they release it as an NFT, I should say, they have their name, you know, really kind of, uh, what would the correct terminology be? Like owning it on the blockchain, everyone can see that they own it. That means if everyone... Anyone who buys it or anyone who sells it, I should say, like the original creator gets a small cut of that, sometimes being 10%. Oh, like royalties, royalties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's probably like the good aspects aspects of it. But when like the good aspects of probably blockchain technology as well, but now looking into like kind of the uh, extension of NFTs, as we were speaking last week, it maybe slightly gets into a lot of bit of scam <laughs> kind of <laughs> profiteering. Um, we were speaking about it last week and the kind of development that I've had over the week, I've someone, a Dylan, Dylan told me this actually, and it was interesting to hear the reason being is because when NFTs came out, 
Um, I personally had a history trading shit coins. Mm. Okay. So um, you're used to f- flipping uh, things that were hyped up or like sort of trending in fad, but mm-hmm. not necessarily with NFTs before. Yeah, year. and very lack of liquidity and like very emotionally based, like incredibly difficult to actually understand what on earth is going on. And what I understood through that is that you know, there's there's no real fucking system, right? But yeah. Uh, which means what I, I was using that kind of experience to look at NFTs and make a distinction or make a decision upon, which is bias. We know that, right? Right. Yeah, so I said, look, the, the, fr- the framework that works for value investing and growth investing, it doesn't apply to meme stocks. It doesn't apply to illiquid yeah. invest speculative investments like NFTs. Mm. It's almost like that framework can actually hold you back in this space. Have you, have you kind of noticed the same? Yeah, well, there's an interesting podcast I just listened to on valuation models and just in just in general in crypto. Mm. Um, and it's a bit complex, so I won't get into it, but the premise is that there's no way to really value it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, think, it's, I, think it's, I think it's a little bit like art, right? Like if you're sort of chasing it to make money, you're probably going to lose money, right? But if you kind of come in with like, you're looking for the community you're kind of looking at um you're looking at the artwork you're looking at the you know aesthetics of of uh you know certain style of you know art like art that you like that's probably gonna you know actually make you money as opposed mm. to just trying to chase things that like are sort of you know pop line sort of fleeting mm. um yeah so the recent development i had going back on that was like uh because I had that bias, I couldn't hear it from other people who were saying it similar to Gary V, like they were speaking about this and essentially owning something like a crypto punk and is attributed to kind of the Lamborghini analogy for in the entrepreneur world. Like you'd know this one, you'd see it all the time. People own a Lamborghini to look rich, but with a Lamborghini, you can essentially either rent that or you know, you can fucking essentially forge the fact that you own a Lamborghini somehow. You don't actually have to be rich to own a Lamborghini. To own a CryptoPunk, you actually must be able to pay for it. So it's like a better way to show off that you actually do have money and that you are wealthy. It's a status thing. It's like the blue check mark next to your name on Instagram. But this way, you actually have to pay for it. Meaning you actually have to put the money down, meaning more often than not, there's going to be a high probability that that person paying for it is actually wealthy. Now, when you look at, you know, rich people with lamp, perceive rich people with Lamborghinis, usually influencers, it can be iffy sometimes because as I was saying, you know, they have the ability to forge or, or rent, which may not be the worst idea, but you kind of don't know if they actually have that capital or not. So it's all fugazi, fugazi. <laughs> I think... You take you take a step back, right? Like, what we're talking about here is: Would you pay for something intangible, right? So you're you're like I think, and the example Gary V uses is okay. The argument why people go NFTs are stupid or you can't invest in digital art because it can be copied, you can't touch it, you can't feel it, right? You can't you know sort of you know interact with it specifically. Uh, but then his argument is like, how much? would people value or pay for the blue check on, on, you know, Twitter, Instagram to show that you're legit. And you know, how much is that? How valuable is that? How much would you pay for, um, you know, certain bragging rights? And I think building on that, I think it's cool how he kind of talked about this idea of, you know, the metaverse, how people will start valuing their digital identity more than their real world identity, because you can only show your Lambo and your watch at the same time. But in the digital world, you can show your helicopter JPEG and your, you know, your crypto punk and like you can show Mm. all of your assets. So it's going to be good and bad, right? Because you can see the status signaling, but then you've also got like this hyper, like it's almost like keeping up with the Jonas's, but on fucking steroids, dude. Like, Mm. you know what I mean? Because you can see people's um, net worth or accumulating of of artwork in real time, if, if, if you will. Mm. But like on that point, like how far away 
is us actually living in the metaverse. I know like it's, it's, we're, we're somewhat like that <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, fair call. Let, in, let, let me, yeah. Go. No, you go, you go. Let, let, let me ask you this, right? So typical person sleeps eight hours, they're awake for 16 hours, right? Mm -hmm. So in my mind, right, if, 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 a, if a child, if a younger person spends nine hours in their day, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, it leaves 16 hours where they're awake. Mm -hmm. If half of the day, eight hours, is spent in the digital world, half is spent in the real world, right? So this, because you can imagine a young kid sort of gaming on an iPad, screen time is actually like eight or nine hours. Mm. That, that arguably is his real world because he's spending more time in the digital world than he is in the real world. So maybe that is his reality. There's a lot of that an individual thing where he's essentially scrolling the feeds he's scrolling he's watching youtube videos by himself he's not necessarily he may be messaging but it's not mm. having this social interaction as far as like walking around the potential metaverse and seeing different things and, you know catching up on different land with different people and friends mm. kind of like gta but real life if that makes sense like but that's got the concept of the ready player one and like you know it has to be a place rather than like you know a point in time you know what I mean? So like it's different different views. Um, but yeah, I think the one that people can relate more to is is the one where you've got like a, it's like Minecraft or it's like a, or it's like Roblox and you're running around in this world and you're like pixelated and you've got events and you got art and you got like you know yeah you yeah buy a block of land. <laughs> I definitely mean in that context, like not as in like yeah. it's the most. It looks like you because that's probably I don't even know how long away. You know what I mean? I'm the way I visualize that is like Club Penguin. Yeah. You know Club what I mean? Penguin, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you have an avatar. It's kind of you. You have your own house where you show off all these different things that you buy. But in regards yeah. to that, the where I was going with that point is like, dude, the prices of these small things that you can show off are so expensive that they actually don't make sense if they were built into a game. There's no way someone's going to buy a hundred dollar game and then go and buy a picture of a helicopter for $5,000 or a picture of a couch that they can potentially use or, you know what I mean? Like that's well, not- the thing, the, the thing for me, whether it's a, a couch or a helicopter or a rock, right? Um, <laughs> Fucking rock. Or, it's or genius. Rock. That's, that's, that's fine. If that thing's got value, that thing's got value, right? But the thing that's scammy as fuck is you go on OpenSea, you look up Rock Project 123, thinking that it's a legit thing, and there's like another 5,000 replicas, and you could accidentally buy the wrong thing if you don't mm -hmm. know what you're doing. 100%. So what's, you know, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah, like the kind of, we talk about what demand versus supply how many times? Supply versus right. demand is usually how I said like, but just speaking on the supply, side of things like when i was trading the shit coins i'm telling you this is not a joke i would refresh and thousands and thousands of new projects would pop up they have the exact same thing is happening with this people are literally jumping on this just to flip and try and make a quick buck on people who don't know what they're doing and we have like the people who do know what they're doing are buying crypto punks and they i think the distinguished as well is they got in really early a majority of people people who didn't like us, we, I think that's where our mistake was. We didn't allocate some capital early enough. Hmm. But we have to put things in, in perspective too, right? So something that you buy six months ago for $1,000, which is now worth, you know, $220,000. That's not like completely organic growth. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, if, if, you know, if the growth is, when something stands the test of time and it shows that it can continue to grow, then that's where it's like, okay, this is probably a good long-term investment, not something where you're, you're playing yams, like, you know, like hot potato. You're not trying to, you're not trying to be the last one holding the, you know, the hot mm. potato. Yeah. Um, the, the thing with NFTs is like, I hear a lot like kind of, oh, this one has, Oh, I'm buying in this one. I'm buying this one because like it has either long term, like stay around ability, or like I believe in it long term, or it's gonna, you know, it's got something backing it, et cetera, et cetera. 
And I'm like, mm. I, I don't, like, I, none of that matters. Mm. The only thing that drives these things at the moment, because it is in literally like in a bull market, like it's going mental, like it's parabolic at this point, right? It's very, very toppy. <laughs> you can probably agree, but the, like, it's the only way to like, look at these things and actually kind of apply some sort of metric to how well they're going to do is if they have like good like they are trending and they have volume already and you know there's hype for them yeah but the way to make big money is to buy them before they have the hype which means you're guessing and you're throwing darts at a freaking dartboard you have no damn what you have no idea yeah <laughs> i i 100 agree and like you know some it, it's not on, on on one side it's really important to kind of find like artwork that you like because if the shit goes to zero you, you hopefully you still value the artwork for itself right but on the other hand like you've got stuff that is subjectively like you know you might go look at the artwork and go that's really average but why is that worth heaps but mm. there's community behind it or might, maybe what it represents so like take crypto punks yeah it's arguably one of the first projects that made generative art it pioneered like generative art where it kind of went, all right, this is the first of its idea where people got behind it, they backed it. And that's the reason why it does so well. I don't think CryptoPunks looks, looks that cool. You know what I mean? Like in terms of the artwork itself, but it's cool because it's like, imagine the very first TV set that was produced, the very first touchscreen phone that was produced. It's got that pioneer thing. So I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, can you, in the share screen, just uh, change the options uh, down the middle to share screen. I just really want to quickly show people what a crypto punk is in case they're watching it. So like down the down the middle good to go. of the screen. Yes, wait, let's have a look. So, can you see that? Yeah, I've got you. <laughs> so the, All right, cool. Yeah. So do you, do you want to talk through it, Daniel? Uh, no, <laughs> you can, but I think the idea for a lot of people is they try and find one that looks like them. And then they change like their cut. You've probably seen on Instagram or kind of like on a lot of social media, they change their profile picture to this. And it's that status blue check that we're talking about. Uh, only a few people allowed it. Are, are really have the, the, not a few people, but what are they? 10,000 lucky. Yeah. So there's 10,000 generated randomly. And then uh, if you are one of the first adopters in the space, you were airdropped like one of these as well. So these were, basically like given out for free and mm. in the beginning um, you may... but in a, in a very short period of time they've kind of gone from a floor price of around two and a half to five thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars for the cheapest crypto punk mm. so it's just it's, insane it's just insane but it's before people adopt that as like okay it is a blue mark check it's a status symbol it is nothing as in like yeah it's just what is it art. <laughs> it's artwork right <laughs> i think it's beyond just the art itself um i think as i'm sort of getting sort of red pilled and sort of understanding nfts a bit more i'm realizing it represents um like i guess going back to the very basic definition non-fungible fun 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 or non-fungible is this idea that you can't replace one token for another right it's unique so there's only x amount of it it's verified on the blockchain and you know that you know it can't be you know it, it's not like a louis vuitton wallet that can just be copied and you know you can't tell if it's real or not you've got the blockchain which, which kind of tells you or verifies it um but yeah like do you know much about board board ape yacht club have you heard of them i've seen what you're showing me but i can't say i've looked into the project as much yeah so my my mate sort of flagged this with me early on i didn't completely get it but i thought it was kind of cool so the idea is you know you 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 sort of um you buy one of the the apes and then you've got sort of access to you know things that sort of roll out throughout the roadmap so you've got different areas like the bathroom the bar and all this sort of stuff and then you sort of follow the team but more more recently because this 
project is blown up, right? And there's all this money getting behind it. You've got like, uh, you've got like, uh, you've got like Stephen, uh, is it Steph? Yeah, Steph Curry, who's, I won't jump into this now, but you've got like Steph Curry, who's changed the basketballer. His, yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah, changed yeah. his tw Twitter handle um, to this profile of, of his board ape that he's purchased. And so all these ce celebrities are getting behind these NFTs, which are sort of giving it legitimacy and it's giving it sort of interest, right? Um, and because the project is worth so much, the founders have actually done things like hosted parties where they've said, if you have a board ape, you get access to this yacht party, right? That's your ticket to that mm. party, including drinks and what would have cost, you know, $10,000 a ticket or $5,000 a ticket. Mm. Yeah, well, when they're, well, how much are these things now? I mean, now, obviously the, the cost of the monkey would be, or the apes would be more than the, the yacht ticket club itself, but more than the fucking yacht. In, yeah. Well, if, if you got in at a thousand dollars, you've not only made like 300 times your money, but you've got this ticket to this exclusive elite club, if you will, you know? Mm. So I think, th listen, the, they're better when they're backed by some form of utility, similar to like yeah. V friends. If they have some form of like, there's a podcast Panther that Gary Vaynerchuk has released and it allows you to, if you own this podcast Panther, there's only five, I think um, you get to have him on for a 40 minute podcast, but you only get it twice, Marky, two times. It's right. only valid for right. two years. That's, that's two true, but years. let's, let's, let's work backwards, right? When it first rolled out, it was one ETH and ETH was roughly $2,000. A lot of people would pay $5,000 to speak to Gary V for, you know, two hours on one, like one-on-one. -on -one. So, I mean, that's <laughs> design itself, but. <laughs> Like that's from Gary V. Like, well done, Gary V. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the people yeah. buying this, like I'm trying to think from investors' point of view, I'm not sure I get it. Yeah. You're not buying it for the artwork. Like this looks like kids' kids' drawings, right? Yes, it's horrible. Like you're buying <laughs> literally for the utility. You know? Yeah. So I know I, I would implore a lot of people. You know what I feel about NFTs as well? is they're similar to like a lot of the just crypto in general. Like people skip just investments in general and go straight to this because it seems sexier. It only seems sexier because you've heard of, like Mark and I were talking about the return um, marketing. So they will kind of market, if you bought this at this price, you could have had this amount of money, right? That to a lot of people seems sexy, but it's unrealistic. The probability of that happening is so low. So if people skip regular investing understanding how the stock market works understanding how dollar cost averaging works how compound interest works what an index is all of this stuff to go into the sexiest shit in the space and then they get a distaste <coughs> apologies people bless you they get a distaste or they get kind of like scared of investing because they end up poor buggers end up losing half their shit you know and being one yeah. for like investing is so important you know it's such a important part of someone's life and really help them i don't like things that scare people away inherently yeah it's just just like it it happened in 2017 2018 it's going to happen exactly again um a lot of people are going to get burnt and you know the narrative or like you know people sort of uh people will keep saying that you know these things will will hold their value if you choose the right projects but I think everything goes down. Like you got to remember that like 98% of this will end up as trash. It's only we're in a period of, you know, over like emotions are playing, playing like way over the top and people think, you know, Hey, this is my ticket out. You know, it's mm -hmm. coronavirus time. Things are tough. People go, I can turn my thousand dollars into 300,000. I'm set for life. But you know, those, uh, for, for, for all those people that make money, they come in early, all the latecomers are going to get burnt. So you're yeah, a bit worried on the other side too. And the way that works, like if you buy something and you, you're lucky enough to get your hands on something, it pumps 10X and then you realize the price is dropping, mm -hmm. there will be no liquidity to sell into. And what that means yeah. in the simplest terms, that there's no one to sell to.
because there's no one who want to buys this shit because everyone's selling. Yeah. So you have to like if you're if you do own one of these and you are in profit, yeah, you have to sell on what we call a green candle. So when the price is going up, because once the price starts dropping, the more probability that you're gonna be left holding the bag. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little bit like this, right? So at, when when like Pokemon is stand as a test of time, right? So yeah. it's it's sort of been around for twenty years. So when something sustains demand and interest and people collect that shit over a long period of time you know that thing's valuable and it's probably continue, going to continue to be valuable right it's mm-hmm. got kind of that that goodwill but like let's say if someone goes you know oh Yu-Gi-Oh was big for a period of time is there value in Yu-Gi-Oh like 20 years later there's a lot of projects that can't sustain that interest and I think that's the way you have to see NFTs where most projects will become forgotten I think it's interesting as a whole NFTs you're kind of realizing that it is going to change the way, you know, sort of we interact with the internet and with art and just with, you know, sort of access and um, plenty of smart people coming up with these ideas of, you know, like utility that we haven't even thought of through NFTs and it's going to make that possible. But there's going to be a lot of trash where, you know, like a lot of, I say it like cartoons, yeah, there's a lot of cartoons that were really cool at the time, but then they kind of, they, they get, less interesting to the next generation mm, so absolutely. how do you how do you invest how do you invest in something that's timeless or something that's going to remain you know interesting yeah. so once I just, the celebrities have moved on <laughs> exactly yeah. right i just saw you bring up the disney ones as well on the share screen then yeah and like i'm um, not sure your view yeah. but they make a touch more sense to me than most yeah i think look when you've got when you've got a conglomerate you've got a hundred years of you know longevity or like a brand that's that that's built its loyalty base then you've got that kind of backing from uh you know a, a big organization where you're like okay i trust this you know mm-hmm. so that's it, it's almost like a, maybe you can talk on this because you, you invested in yams right it's this idea it's like if everyone agrees it's worth something it's worth something but the it's like it's it's based on like how long can everybody continue to believe something's worth something as soon as one person pulls out it's like a house of cards it starts like sort of falling over do you want to do you want to talk through what yams is <laughs> dude i don't even know what yams are that's the exact like what you're talking about is the exact thing though like oh, yeah. i'm probably not going to get into staking because i don't understand it yeah. that well um yeah but as, yeah let's just say that essentially that it, it just attribute it to similar type of kind of investment like nfts or anything like that when yeah. hype is involved when like i mean marky when the price goes up very very quickly and high high returns are in are like kind of the staple for it we know yeah. the opposite of that is it comes down very 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 quickly and very hard <laughs> <laughs> so like dude there's like I can better speak about this in regards to like the shit coins on the BSC chain when I was doing that. Yeah. Dude, when I was buying these things, I was getting up at like 4 a.m., purchasing mm. like decent allotment sizes. And then within a, not even a second, sometimes it would be so difficult for me to purchase because there's so much volume. I couldn't get a price mm. in. I'd have to buy pay a premium first of all. And then once I would buy it, it would go up like, a thousand percent within 30 seconds and within 60 seconds is at zero (laughs) dude that's you know i've i've gone through the same thing i've probably lost like i'm embarrassed to say i've lost like like four digits in the span of like five minutes and this was before this this was like in 27 2017 when like you probably shouldn't have (laughs) but you know it's you can't live and learn dude what do you think i think nfts are worse than that shit yeah because with this there's a price uh, there's an audible you can, kind of you can see the shit nfts you have no fucking idea when someone's about to pull out there's candles on bsc yeah. chain where's I, the candles i think i think one thing we got to talk about right is the the barriers of entry so people hear about nfts and they think all right 
how do I actually go from hearing about NFTs to being getting skin in the game and investing, right? So then you find out the logistics of it, you buy your cryptocurrency, your Ethereum or whatever, and then you find out you need to use MetaMask and then you try to purchase something and you're like, oh, there's this thing called gas fees. So it's almost like, you know, the thing that, that allows your vehicle, right, to, to go or allows to facilitate that transaction. And that gas fee, you find out, is like two hundred dollars US, and it fluctuates <laughs> during periods of like crazy hype. That shit goes up to like five hundred dollars gas fees. Yeah. So that's that's your ticket to have that transaction. So how many people can afford to spend five hundred dollars on gas fees? You know, to mm. to buy. It's like going. All right, I want to buy this um, this this photo of Van Gogh. It's uh, uh, I'm gonna give it to your discount. So usually, you know, ten million dollars. I'm gonna sell it to you for like ten k, but the ticket of entry to facilitate the brokerage is gonna cost you ten k. You know, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> dude. There's so yeah. many NFTs on here that look up. There are like point two of an Ethereum, like or they're two hundred fifty bucks or something ridiculous. And then you're exactly right. Like the gas fee is five hundred bucks. Yeah. Like you're paying so you... more to participate. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and people go, it's okay as long as I make money from it, right? Like the, the art itself is costing less than the, than the ticket. So you're, it's like buying a house and going, all right, I'm going to pay a million dollars for the broker to facilitate the sale of a $500,000 house. <laughs> That's, She's like, what's the point? You, you can't. You can't use your prior investing frameworks when it comes to NFTs sometimes, eh? Hey? No, nah, it's just, and there's no way to tell what's exactly right. And yeah, like you're saying, there's no way to tell if you're actually going to work. I can't find a singular way to actually tell if they're going to work. Yeah. It's crazy. I, <laughs> I think the best way to relate it is like, can you say this? Yeah. yeah so this, <laughs> So this this is GameStop, right? <laughs> and like, you know, this this was early in the year around January, and this thing went from you know two dollars fifty or whatever, where like deep fucking value on on Reddit, you know, started the movement and everyone invested. This thing went up twenty six times in the span of, you know, sort of like thirty days, and all of these people came in at the top here, and. You know, people thought, oh, yeah, this is going to keep going. Like, you know, this is going to start a, a movement. It's, this is counter trend. This is cool. This is pop. Like, we're going to fucking, like, change shit up. And they did for a little while. But then, like, look what happened after. 91%, like, within, like, less than sort of uh, 60 days. Is that they a daily 90%. or a weekly? Daily. So Dude. You're, look, you're looking at, oh, sorry, yeah, you're looking at 25 days you're talking about. Where you've yeah. lost ninety percent of your money, and this this exact same shit is going to happen in in NFTs. Like it's happened in the meme stocks, it's going to happen in NFTs. And hundred percent. At least you've got you've got like if anyone's ever traded NFTs, you'll realize that like you know you're basing. It's almost like eBay, right? You got all these bids, and then imagine half the bids get pulled. You you just like the order books become like so thin that you, even if you wanted to sell, you can't. Whereas something like GameStop, there's someone on the other side of your trade. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah no. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know for a lot of people I see, and I think some really important thing I was talking about as well is, but like, let's see what you think. Like, mm. again, they're skipping steps. Like the only reason you're getting into NFTs or into trading shit coins on crypto or, or, uh, I mean, you know, like Phantom and all those coins and shit like that. Because this market is hot right now, will you want to own this stuff when it goes down by 80% and 90%? No, you won't. You wouldn't want to own anything that goes down 90% for Christ. No, you wouldn't want to, right? But you're skipping steps of understanding how a lot of these things work to kind of, it's like ignorance is bliss. Because it's trendy, you can kind of forego actual knowledge and just hype in. And then you're just hoping that someone else will hype in after you for you to sell to. Yeah. That's literally I feel it. like I feel like with NFTs, the minimum barrier to entry is kind of like that two thousand to five thousand dollar mark. 
right? So, or even let's say if you go on the cheaper ones, you might be able to invest for thousand dollars. Let's just go off the round number thousand dollars. If you're a new investor, you don't have, you've never invested before. You got to ask yourself, do you want to, you know, sort of hang on to that thousand dollars and invest slowly, right, in something safe until you build up your capital, or are you willing to risk losing that entire thousand dollars for potentially making five or ten thousand dollars, but you've got a pretty high chance of losing that entire thousand dollars. And people will always, for some reason, just because you know, the culture we live in at the moment of like, you know, oh, I'll keep buying lotto tickets to try and, you know, that risk to reward ratio is just unrealistic. Like people don't realize that in the stock market, a good, like the S&P 500, which is top 500 companies in America, that returns 10%. Remember that shit, Marky? 10%, yeah. that's the golden standard. That's the average. At hardcore, we get 20%. Now this year we've got forty five percent. Last year we got seventy five percent, and that shit is like, look, I'm all, I'm almost, I'm really confident to say that shit's like ninety nine point nine percent happening. Yeah, the probability Ooh. of happening is so high. NFTs making money, zero point one percent. So this is the way I kind of say it, right? Let's say if you're you're really young, right, and you've started working, you're really savvy, you've saved ten thousand dollars, right, or on the other end where you're kind of like, um, you know, you've, you've got a lot of commitments, but you've managed to put, you know, you've got income coming in, but you've got other sort of responsibilities too, but you've managed to put $10,000 that you've got lying around that you want to invest. I think from that $10,000, you could probably invest $500 into these NFTs. And then the sort of other eight to 9,000, you know, should go into sort of tech stocks or like more, you know, reliable um, long-term investments. So you, taking the gamble is fine, but if you've got two thousand dollars and you're spending, you know, a thousand dollars on NFTs, you're probably going to set yourself back. You know what I mean? So I think it's all relative. If you've got ten thousand dollars in savings, if you've got a hundred thousand dollars in investments or savings, then you can invest a thousand or or five thousand um, dollars. But I think people should spend more than five to ten percent at the very most of their, you know, sort of investments on these, you know. It is what it is like it's risky investments like really fucking invest risky Dude, it's literally opportunity cost mm. like you putting your money into something that has the lowest probability that i've ever seen of making money or something that is going to make money it is it is going to make money if you don't put that money into something then it's opportunity cost simple and you hear yeah. stories of like yeah but this dude made a hundred thousand dollars this dude made life-changing money, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a good way to think because it's the exact same mentality of like someone else has actually won the lotto as well. Just enough mm. people will win just so they can market it towards you. Yeah. So I, that you sleep I, I could, buying. If I, if I was a full degenerate, which I probably am in some ways, I'd probably endorse <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd probably endorse like young people going, all right, I've got this casual part-time job, right? Or full-time job. I'm going to do overtime and save an additional 2000 or or $3,000, right? That I wouldn't have had, but I'm motivated by trying to make it in crypto. So I'm going to work these additional hours and make an extra two or $3,000. And that's my one ticket to try to flip NFTs. And I'm going to learn like a motherfucker and try to find out the good projects from the shit ones. And then that's going to be my one ticket to try to turn that into, you know, uh, 20000 $200,000. But if I lose that, then I'm not going to do that anymore. That's fine. I can get behind that. See, the thing about... <laughs> <laughs> you are a degenerate. <laughs> uh, the thing about learning, right, is like you should learn previous to that. And then the big returns, like what you're saying, come so early on in the game that you don't have time to learn something new. That's why new people to the game can't win. Mm. And it's like risking that is still throwing darts at the board. And if you're risking money while you're learning... I get it's like skin yeah. in the game because it's giving you incentive to learn, but you're throwing it down the drain. Yeah, I agree. You're, you, you're kind of going to level 10 or like level 100 before you've kind of learned, you know, the basic principles of investing and, yeah. you know, sort of risk and stuff. So Exactly. All right. I got another potty to go into, so I got to go. All right. No, nice chatting, mate. <laughs> All right. I Thanks think that was a good one. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah that was good. So. We stayed on. We stayed on one topic, so we'll see what the response is like. You know, yeah, 
Absolutely. I hope people like it. Yeah. All right. Enjoy, bro. Good All time. right. Ladies, y'all, like, subscribe, yeah. good notification bell, uh, do all that good stuff. All right. We'll see you next week. Let's go. See you guys. Peace. Thank you.